Welcome to my channel. This is Spirit Soul Sense Information for Your Soul. I'm Dr. Sharice and I help people heal from trauma and toxic relationships. I have a lot of videos on my channel about toxic relationships. I also have a website. You should check that out. You can find this shirt, Relationships of the Evolution of Your Soul. I have some other merch on there too. <laughs> my mug. So you know I love tea. Uh, but in this video today, I really wanted to talk about toxic relationships, abusive relationships. I've heard a lot of people talking about the mutual abuse term that was used in Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's um, defamation case. I, I think, I think because we live in this world where so many people view themselves as being the victim, it's very hard for people to have this understanding that you have agency in everything. You have agency in everything. Um, and I'm not talking about children being abused by adults, right? The, the abuse is never the fault of the child. It's always the fault of the adult. But if you've been in the sort of environment, work environment that I've been in, the cases you've seen, adults target certain children who have been traumatized, who do not have care, um, who, who do not have other adults who are looking out for their best interests. So there's always a certain set of um, characteristics and traits that go into the person who is victimized, right? The view as being the victim. Uh, in adult relationships, romantic relationships specifically, it takes two toxic people to maintain an unhealthy, toxic, and or abusive relationship. There is never a innocent party, so to say. And I, I think people really, really identify with the person who is um, receiving the most abuse, the, viewed as being the person who is receiving the most abuse um, as someone that they want to save, right? Oh my gosh, we should defend Johnny Depp. We should make sure that Amber Heard, you know, gets her day in court and, you know, she deserves to be in prison and all this stuff. Uh, I don't really see these people as um, abuser victim. I don't really view it that way. And I don't think it's helpful to view any sort of toxic dynamic that way. In the book, Women Who Love Too Much, that I talk about all the time, it is very, very important to understand that the victim, right, the person who is being um, uh, abused the most, I would say, in these relationships is an active participant in these interactions. They are willingly staying in this abusive relationship. Why? Why? The why will get the person to the understanding that there is a lack inside of them. There's a scarcity mindset. There's um, a negative belief. I, de I don't deserve real love. Um, I deserve to be harmed and abused. I, I deserve for people to disrespect me, call me names. That's the belief. If the belief wasn't there, the behavior of staying in a toxic ugh, cesspool of negativity, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, right? Uh, a, a toxic relationship takes two toxic people because if a healthy person comes along and I know there's these people talking about, oh, he targeted me because um, he knew I was strong and he wanted to see if he could break me down. Okay. Okay. He targeted you because he saw a weakness in you and he wanted to exploit that weakness. Toxic people, um, when they meet a healthy person, right? They still do the mind games on them too. They are who they are. When they get in front of a fairly healthy person whose who's belief, whose core belief is, I deserve goodness. I deserve love. I deserve kindness. I deserve loving kindness. I deserve a, a partner who is willing to give as much as I give. If that's their core belief, they are so repelled by a narcissist or a toxic person or an abusive person or someone who, who plays mind tricks or someone who uses manipulation. They are so repelled that there is no way a long-term relationship can last. They're gone on the first date. They're gone on the first three dates. They are definitely gone past the first month. Uh, anything that lasts longer than three months, I'm saying if you have encountered a narcissist and you've spent a significant amount of time with that person, you have some healing work to do. Viewing yourself as the victim is only going to get you more of what you don't want, what you say you don't want, because the core belief is still there. So in Amber Heard and, and Johnny Depp, I, I hear the pain in Johnny Depp. Um, I hear the callousness. In Amber Heard, um, you know, she is probably more far gone. I also say, even though it takes two toxic people, um, sometimes the abuser deserves jail, right? Sometimes the abuser needs to be in prison because there are men who literally kill women uh, because they're in this abusive cycle that keeps going. 
That man needs to be in jail. But the woman still needs healing. She still needs like extensive therapy to come to a, a, a an understanding of who she is, of her self-worth. She needs to boost her self-esteem. She needs to figure out what happened in her childhood that would make her think any of this was okay. If any of this was okay, okay? So I want you to go watch my video on um, my abusive relationship right my my toxic relationship um with a guy i mean he wasn't really that narcissist there were other things going on i think he's more borderline if you know what that means uh but the point is i have taken the steps to make sure that i heal from the trauma that i experienced in childhood and johnny depp and amber heard are going to have to do the same i think it's going to be harder for amber Heard to do it because she's so i think cut off from her feelings um, and also, because, well, I also view all of this as a disconnection from God. I think she's really disconnected from universe, spirit, God, all of that positive energy. I think she's very disconnected. I, I think Johnny Depp, because he has been um, the one receiving the most sort of verbal, emotional abuse, right? Because I'm sure they did it to each other. I'm sure they manipulated each other. I was recently watching my video on Celeste and Perry here on my channel because I document um what it what an abusive relationship looks like and i think celeste and perry's from hbo's um, big little lies has some of the best description that i could see of this thing happening uh there was also an abusive relationship in tyler perry's four colored girls it's not the best movie i mean not that anything to, uh, you can you can watch it if you want uh there's also an abusive relationship in that movie uh that ends in a death but part of the woman's healing was to realize that she needed to take some accountability for what happened so that she could move forward. So Johnny Depp, I think, has very good prognosis because he's been in pain, right? So he's at least been in touch with some emotion, pain emotion, um, that I, I've been hurting. And then I've had to share with people in the public this thing that happened to me. So his psychologist was on there. I don't know if it was a, just an examination done, um, evaluation, or if they're doing ongoing therapy. Johnny Depp definitely needs ongoing therapy. Um, like to be in such an abusive relationship with the violence, there must be so much pain inside of him. Uh, the whole, his perception of, you know, not feeling whole and taking what this what this woman has has done to him but they both need healing that's my point they both need healing and anyone who's in an abusive relationship both of these people need healing sometimes one person needs prison but both of these people need healing uh and this focus on you know one person you know being taking the brunt of all of this negative stuff or reacting with abuse i, I think takes away from the agency of the person to heal and to create a, a healthy relationship in the future, right? So if you think you did nothing wrong, why would you make any changes, right? Why would you make any changes if you thought you did nothing wrong? Uh, so I'm, I'm telling you, if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, it takes two toxic people and the awareness is the hardest part. But after the awareness, you can read the book, Women Who Love Too Much. It has a lot of steps to take to get good with yourself. It's really about focusing on yourself so that you can love yourself, like yourself, and to create the actual life that you want. Those are my thoughts on that. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, share this video with someone you think it may help, and thank you for watching.